Hi, I'm Dr. Khushra Bhajan. I'm a consultant physician and a critical care specialist and emergency specialist in Hinduja Hospital. And today being 7th of uh, April being the World uh, Health Day, uh, the theme of WHO being uh, preventing ourselves from vector-borne diseases, I would like to talk a little on that. A vector actually is something which is a, a living object and that causes some form of an infection into a human body either directly or indirectly. These vectors could be in the form of mosquitoes or bugs or ticks or rodents or rats, anything. The common four infections that are caused or diseases that are caused by vectors in India are the malaria, dengue, chikungunya and the leptospirosis. There may be some others which also can be caused by these vectors and uh, such as ticks and bugs and these could be rickets hill fever, rocky mountain fever, scrub typhus etc. But those are the exotic ones and I would rather talk about the main four. So let's take each one of these and uh, throw some light on that. Let's talk about malaria which is the most dreaded uh, infection or the disease in India and also in the Southeast Asia. Malaria has four types but the common two ones are the Plasmodium vivax and the Plasmodium falciparum. Malaria can be caused by the Anopheles uh, mosquito and the female population and this female Anopheles usually bites from dusk to dawn so it's usually a night biter. So malaria can be contracted from these during the night uh, mosquito bites. Uh, malaria symptomatically uh, causes a lot of high grade fever, there would be headaches, there would be body ache but not so severe and these patients if not treated for two or three days could even need intensive care therapy. Uh, malarial fever is quite peculiar that you may have fever just once a day or maybe even fever coming once every second or third day but these differentiations are now because of mutations changing quite rapidly. Malaria is easily treatable but it should be uh, caught early, should be diagnosed early and then the mortality and the morbidity from it is less. Let's talk about dengue fever which is again very dreaded. Dengue is caused by another mosquito called as the Aedes aegypti and this is the same mosquito which causes chikungunya as well. So let me take both these together. Chikungunya is not so very common. It was about a bit common in certain 30 to 40 countries in the world and that was about three years ago. We don't see much of chikungunya now. Uh, what happens is in chikungunya the, there is severe myalgia that is severe body ache and muscle pain and that is a differentiating factor and we need tests, uh, antigenic tests to actually diagnose that. As against that dengue could be as mild a fever which could be passed off without treatment or it could be extremely severe and cause death. Dengue basically is as I said caused by the Aedes aegypti and this mosquito prefers to bite in the day. So basically between these two mosquitoes you are not safe day or night. Many of times we confuse which one bites in the day and which one bites in the night. So I remember it in this way. Uh, dengue is the daytime uh, infection and uh, malaria is the night. So dengue can have three types of illnesses uh, projected after the patient has been bit and it could be a plain dengue viral fever which does not need treatment just needs rest and hydration the second type would be a dengue uh, uh, hemorrhagic fever where the patient could be having coagulopathy and would be bleeding from sites and that should uh, bring the patient to a hospital for better care early care and the third would be a shock syndrome where the person would have extremely low blood pressure and therefore that could be very fatal if not treated urgently uh, a dengue fever basically has no major treatment except symptomatic treatment so there's no antidote for it like you would have for malaria and here you would need to give lots and lots of fluids because these patients are by and large dehydrated and they go into multi-organ failure. So if you give them lots of hydration from the beginning, monitor their platelet counts then we should be uh, sailing through these patients who have been uh, uh, having the dengue disease. Chikungunya I already mentioned. Let me just spread some light on leptospirosis. Leptospirosis is a little weird because it's not only caused by vector bond but it can be caused by water bond also. Now let me explain that how it happens. Usually this happens in the rainy season and uh, it's through the feces or the urine of rats or rodents 
and so if you have been wading through waters bare, bare fo foot and not wearing chappals or protective uh, shoes etc then and if you have any cuts on yourself on your skin then the same water contaminated water can get you leptospirosis or on the other hand if you drink the water which is contaminated by the rodent or the rats urine or feces that can also get you uh, sick with leptospirosis this is usually caused by a parasitic bug which is spirochetes and leptospirosis can affect the liver can affect the kidneys much more than malaria or dengue and therefore these patients present with jaundice and are usually misdiagnosed as having hepatitis or jaundice and not leptospirosis so a good vigil would be important these patients also have red spots on their uh, near their eyes on their sclera and these are things which would guide us towards the diagnosis of leptospirosis also this is all these four diseases could affect the heart could cause myocarditis and make the patient very very unstable so my kind of an advice to you would be any fever which does not subside in one day makes you weak has severe myalgia has something beyond a normal cough cold and fever should be addressed immediately should be reported to a doctor and investigated further because timely care would save lives thank you